Ladies and gentlemen, this particular news is getting serious by the day. We have to now officially talk about this with greater detail and do some homework about this particular player. I certainly have started doing some homework. I'm pretty sure you guys would uh, would have already started. Uh, some probably will start now. But we do need to start talking about this particular player, Victor Gekouris. I uh, hope I've pronounced this right. I'm pretty sure I've butchered it, but it is what it is. So we're definitely going to talk about this. We've got a whole heap of other transfer news as well that we want to touch base on. And also Maurizio Pochettino, I think, is feeling the pressure. Uh, he's gone on a bit of a rant in the latest press conference. So we're going to talk about that and how he was asked a couple of really, really tough and good questions from the fans' perspective. And he tried to twinkle to around that. So all of that is going to happen on this particular news segment. Let's start from here. Chelsea have inquired over a deal for sporting striker Victor Gekiris. Gekiris, hopefully, once again, if I've pronounced that right, let me know if I if I haven't. This is very difficult to pronounce. Um, this is a particular striker, uh, as, as obviously mentioned here from Sporting Lisbon. And this news has been floating around for the past couple of weeks or so. And... Um, we are now somewhat deviating away from Victor Ossiman and Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony, I think, more inclined to go towards Arsenal. Victor Ossiman, I think, financially, I'm not really sure how that, that how that's actually going to happen. He's getting closer and closer to that contract extension as well with Napoli with the release clause of 130 million euros. Now, look, we may still very well be able to do that. Um, the new owners, I'm pretty sure, will find fancy ways to accommodate for that finance. This brother as well is not going to come for cheap. But before we get into all of that, what what do we know about this guy? What do we know about this guy? So let's let's actually get to know. All right. So here we go. 25 years old, place of birth, Stockholm. So obviously Swedish background. So 25, you know, he, he's been around. Like he's not a kid anymore. He's someone you think if Chelsea do get him, the thought is for immediate impact. Right. Contract expires, as you can see over here, ladies and gentlemen, 30th June 2028. So he does have quite a bit of time left with Sporting Lisbon. And I think this is probably why he's worth uh, the kind of money that, that they're saying. It's somewhere around 100, 100 million in release clause. This is what he's been doing this season. 13 matches. This is what Eunice has been banging on about in the last few uh, videos is that this particular brother, Victor Giacchiris, has played only 13 matches in top flight. So um, prior to that, we'll have a look as to what he's done. So 13 matches in top flight, 10 goals, 5 assists, which is pretty good. Um, overall this season, 17 goals, 8 assists, and 1,582 minutes played. So all in the Portuguese league, as you can see over here, uh, look... For me, the Portuguese League, I did the um, members call in uh, earlier today. If you guys have missed it, there were some fantastic conversations about many different topics. One of them was this particular brother. And someone someone mentioned in the panel that when was the last time a, a, a striker from the Portuguese League has actually done well in the Premier League? I couldn't think of one. Let me know in the comment section if you guys can remember a striker that has done well. So 13 games played in the top flight so far. So what has he done before that? Let's have a look. 22-23. He was playing in the championship, ladies and gentlemen, and he was playing for uh, Coventry, and he's played 46 matches there, 21 goals, 10 assists. So quite, you know, quite an impressive um, number that he that he conjured up last season in the championship, and look, I'm, I don't disregard the championship if I'm being absolutely honest. I think championship is is quite a strong uh, league, but then again, it, it it's not in the top division, uh, and he was playing for Coventry, so absolutely killed it for Coventry. Plethora of goals, and seems like someone who's quite capable of producing assists as well. So that was last season. What did he do? The season before that. Let's really, really get to know this particular player. The season before that, he was also in um, Coventry. 45 matches played, 17 goals, 5 assists. Overall, 47 matches played, 18 goals, 5 assists. So, strong. 
over the last couple, of, and I think the season before that he was in Swansea. So this particular player seems to be a bit of a late bloomer. He's 25, and the last couple of seasons, well, three seasons, he's actually playing, been playing in the championship, and this is his first break. This is his first proper break this season in the top division for um, for for a, for a you know somewhat of a well-known league which is the portuguese league um it's it's not one of the top leagues out there but it's it still holds quite a lot of value i'm more excited when i see midfielders coming from the portuguese league because midfielders generally do well so overall ladies and gentlemen you can see victor gekiris we have to be careful we really have to be careful this is his first proper season in the top flight and He's, he's doing well. He's absolutely doing well. Now, I just want to now touch base on the second part of this particular news. This is where it gets interesting. Sporting are again reluctant to sell their star forward and have demanded interested clubs pay his full £87 million, £100 million release clause. So we have to assess this situation. Last three seasons especially the last two seasons. He's been playing for Coventry in the Championship, absolutely ripping it apart, scoring goals, assisting as well. This is his first proper season in the top flight. 13 matches played, has banged in quite a lot of goals, and all of a sudden this brother is now worth £87 million. That's his release clause. This is the type of business I don't want Chelsea to do now because we don't know. We don't have enough knowledge about this player at the top flight. A championship, yeah, he's, he's killed it. He's absolutely killed it. But the Premier League is a different beast, absolutely different beast. When you're spending £87 million, you expect the player to come in and hit the ground running immediately. We don't have the luxury to look at more potentials. For me, this brother, he's better off staying at Sporting Lisbon for at least another season minimum, if not two, and keep banging in the goals, not just in the Portuguese League, but in the Champions League. I'm pretty sure Sporting Lisbon will continue uh, making in the Champions League and, and score important goals in the Championship in the biggest, you know, um, you know, in the biggest stage in terms of European football. So for me, I feel like Chelsea are probably going this way because... I'm not sure whether Ivan Tony and Victor Osimhen are actually going to happen. Chelsea are probably looking at this. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, remember this. Chelsea were very keen on purchasing Sporting Lisbon. So I don't know whether this is one of those sweeteners, you know, sweetening up that situation of Chelsea potentially wanting to buy Sporting Lisbon or wanting to have a majority shareholders. And this is something that Chelsea wants to do, you know, reward Sporting by paying this level of money and, and show them that, you know, the owners are very interested to invest on Sporting Lisbon. So I don't know whether this is one of them. And there's another player that we're linked with from Sporting as well. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. Are we in a position to do a transaction like this again? He may be, you know, better than Nicholas Jackson, but we don't just need better than Nicholas Jackson. We need someone who can actually go out and score 20 plus goals and and bring us back to a very, very competitive level in the Premier League. There's just not been enough sample size for Victor Gekiris as yet. That's just my personal opinion. That's a lot of money to be spent for this type of player with minimal experience at the highest level. Let me know what your thoughts are in regards to Victor Gekiris. Everything has been laid up now to you guys, so let me know what happens. Now, I said there's another player that we're linked with from Sporting Lisbon. This is the one. Chelsea have made contact with Sporting over a deal for defender Osmane Diamande as they explore centre-back reinforcements in January. Now, a lot of the fan base are going gaga about this particular player. They're like, no, this is the centre-back that we need badly. I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear comments from you guys uh, saying this is the real deal. Look, once again, I don't follow sporting religiously. Maybe I need to start doing that. He may very well be the next big thing, but I, I can't get over the fact that how many centre-backs that we have. I know we're going to get rid of Chalaba. I know we're going to get, potentially, this is the last season for Thiago Silva, but we still have De Sassi. We still have Badisho. We still have Wesley Fofana. We still have Levi Colwell. 
who I, I, I honestly don't think is a left back. I know he's getting utilized as a left back, and whether we purchase fullbacks down the track, that's a different conversation. There was a news, actually, I'm going to try and bring that up um, very, very soon. There was a news that was floating around that Chelsea are looking for five more signings. I'm, I'm going to get to that very soon. Sporting have knocked back an initial inquiry from Blues for Diamende, insisting they will only sell him for his full 69 million. Like, what's going on, man, with these release clause? Sporting are killing us with these release clauses man get curious 100 million euros 89 million pounds 69 million for diamande like i don't know i don't know like are these players absolutely worth it for this level of money and on top of who we already have um the particular news that i wanted to showcase to you guys let's have a look santi ayuna i think um that's his name yeah this is the guy He's put out a tweet yesterday saying that Chelsea are interested in five players. Look at this. Look at these, ladies and gentlemen. Chelsea are aiming to strengthen in five positions in January. That's too excessive for me. We need to be very careful. We've spent so much and we're looking to do more damage. Five players is way too much. In the January, honestly, if we can add a striker, but I'm not sure about Geek Curious as yet, but if it was... You know, someone like a Tony or, a, um, you know, um, Victor Ossiman, no problems. I think it's a bit far-fetched. Probably not going to be able to add them in January. But besides that, if we're not being able to do that, then I say forget it. Forget doing any sort of business. If you want to add maybe a winger, goal-scoring winger, no problems. But to add a right-back, left-back, centre-back, winger, striker, or wanted it, Jerry, that's mad. I get it. There is a conversation that we need to have in the fullback position. There is. Reese James is going to be unavailable for a little while. Marlo Gusto is out and out right back now. There are some times where Desasi, you know, deputizes that, that position because Marlo Gusto could be injured. On the left side, genuinely there's an issue, but Pochettino seems to be rating Levi Cowell on that left side. Kukure is now injured for a little bit. Ben Chilwell is slowly coming back. Martin is not being offered. So right back, left back, it's not a necessity right now in my opinion, but it's a conversation maybe we need to have down the track in the summer. Center back for me is just excessive. Way too excessive right now. We need to assess what happens down the track in the summer. Winger and a striker, that's something I can agree with. I think a winger, I know a lot of people say, Miz, we've got a plethora of wingers, but I feel like players like Noni Medueke, who we're going to touch base on as well, I, I don't think they're up to the standard, if I'm being absolutely honest. I don't think they're up to the standard. Um, I know Nkunku's back. I'd rather have him playing as a number 10 as opposed to being a winger. Sterling, Cole Palmer, Mudrik, yeah. Um, they're the out-and-out wingers. Look, we could do without it, but if we were to add someone just to help us push for you know better positions, get as close to the European positions, maybe a winger is what i would probably invest in uh, and get rid of um some of the wingers you know get rid of maybe amanda broya get rid of uh, perhaps noni medueke and make a room for someone like um a, a new winger uh, i don't know who it may be but certainly a new winger is something that i could potentially uh, entertain and down the track we don't know what the future holds for you know raheem sterling and, uh, and and so on and so forth um i like sterling but he's another one who's very inconsistent um and, you know, he's, he, in terms of his age, doesn't fit the project, right? So that's another thing to consider. I don't agree with it, but that's something that, you know, uh, that, that could happen. So this is why I could entertain a winger. Now, next up, ladies and gentlemen, Mauricio Pochettino on Noni Madueka. Noni is in a position where there's massive competition, too many players. He needs to compete and raise his level. And this is what we've all been saying in recent times. People have been crying. Why doesn't Noni Medueke play enough? Why does he, you know, Poch doesn't, uh, is being in, he's not being fair. It's injustice that Noni Medueke, look, the bottom line is, why, we need to question why doesn't he start? And there must be certain reasons in the training uh, ground where Poch just doesn't feel that he's, he's competing at the same level as the ones that are playing. Now, we can complain and sit here and go, oh, look at Mudrik, look at Sterling, look how woeful at times they've been. But, Maybe Noni Medueke is training 
is probably not at the same level as those guys. Maybe he just doesn't train well enough. I know, you know, not everyone trains well. We could still give him opportunity. But at the same time, Noni Benueke has been injured as well. So, and there could also be the possibility that Pochettino just doesn't rate Noni Medueke. So for me, look, this is quite clear cut. Pochettino has come out openly and said that he's got to raise his level. He's got to raise his level or else he's not going to find any uh, match time. Now, Maurizio Pochettino, ladies and gentlemen, has gone on a bit of a rant. Let's have a list. Uh, let's have a, uh, you know, um, look at the, the comments um that was that was provided in the press conference um in regards to you know they were asking you know, why doesn't why hasn't Nkunku started or when's Lavia coming back and this that the other this is what Maurizio Pochettino I think it's in regards to Nkunku now a lot of people are saying in regards to maybe Martin could be another player I genuinely think this is probably in regards to Nkunku now this is what Maurizio Pochettino is saying what I will make clear all the players who have a big period out they are desperate to be involved they cannot make a mistake they can be involved but in which way we are competing it's serious uh, the com competition further goes on to say after six months they need to understand to train really really hard each day because they need to have an impact every time they go to the pitch the people the players need to understand what we are not a charity uh, that that we are not a charity it's not a joke we need to win i said at recent times when people were talking about let's be patient with reese james and i said this is not a charity this is absolutely not a charity i'm disappointed to have an important player not helping the team it's not because we don't believe in them when they didn't play it's about today who is ready to compete and what we expect maybe i'm talking too much um yeah look as great as this sounds and great uh you know insight that pochettino is giving us yeah, sometimes I feel like by saying all of these things publicly, I don't know where he will stand uh, amongst amongst the players, being too open. But come on, it's annoying me. People around the players complaining, wanting to play. The club is disappointed after investing big. We invest in the salary. We Who suffers for the coaches and the club? We need to get the right balance. It's so important. Very, very interesting comments here from Maurizio Pochettino. It's gone on a bit of a rant. I'm pretty certain he's talking about Nkunku here. As I said, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. This particular bit right here, this section that we've got in the screen, I think in recent times we've seen how a lot of the journalists said Nkunku is possibly going to be back for Newcastle. He's possibly going to be back for Manchester United, this, that, the other. Finally, he got to feature in the last game, which was at least a month after when the journalists were saying. I was always in the bandwagon that... Pochettino, take your time. Like Nkunku's been away. So I agree with what Poch has been saying. Where I'm a little bit concerned is a couple of things. Obviously, Nkunku's entourage is probably knocking on Pochettino's door and, you know, pressurizing him to play him immediately. Um, maybe even Nkunku has been has been um, eager to, to get onto the pitch as soon as possible. I don't expect Nkunku to start against Wolves either. I expect him to come off the bench. So... And Nkunku himself needs to understand he's been away from the game for a very, very long time. So we've got to be a bit cautious how we're bringing him in. But this just lets me know that there must be pressure internally for many players. And a lot of people are saying maybe this is Madueke's uh, agent and entourage that's forcing, um, you know, Maurizio Pochettino to perhaps spend some saying Martin. And it could be a few other players that are not getting. In this modern era, ladies and gentlemen, it's very difficult. Very, very difficult with the entourage, with, um, you know, all these other p people that are involved with the player creating a lot of chaos. If you remember, I don't know if you guys have seen the Jose Mourinho podcast with John and B. Mikel. Jose Mourinho was saying in this modern era, like, it's just too difficult with some of these agents and, and their entourages because they literally make the manager's job very difficult. And I think, uh, and, and this player is not a modern uh, day uh, era player lasana tiara is one back in those times his agent was always knocking on the door on jose marina every time lasana tiara didn't play so watch this space let's see how this all transpires for maurizio pochettino and and the players uh because at the end of the day these players yeah you know how we talk about oh maybe now enzo's injured we can talk to him he can probably sit on the bench i'm telling you right now you continue benching enzo down the track obviously he's got a bit of injury right now but down the track you continue benching him i'm telling you he's gonna he's his entourage his agents are gonna be knocking on the door left right and center 
Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, Maurizio Pochettino, I'm playing centre-backs at full-back. We need to consider many things. It's a good question. Consideration is about Marlo Gusto coming back from injury. That's why we played Axel at right back and Marlo then came on versus Newcastle. So very good question that was presented by a, a, a particular um, journalist, female journalist. I think um, she's getting, I can't remember her exact name. Shiraz, I think that's the name. But do give her a follow, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you give her a follow. She was asking some top, top questions. This was one of them as to why you're utilizing center backs as fullbacks. And uh, Maurizio Pochettino, once again, not really answering it, but at the same time saying that, look, Malagos is just coming back from an injury. So that's why we wanted to use Axel Desassi. But what about Levi Colwell? What was the answer for Levi Colwell? So there was no response for that. Um, you know, Levi Colwell is genuinely a left back and then uh, he's been utilized as, sorry, genuinely a center back, but he's been utilized as a left back. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the latest on everything that's been floating around. Let me know how you feel about, um, you know, the whole conversation about Gear Curious. Uh, dear Monday, and obviously the press conference, you know, the rant from Pochettino. Uh, I would love to see what you guys have to say about this in the comment section. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I'll see you guys for a live stream tomorrow. Until then, take care and see ya.